warm welcome to the program. I'm Melinda Akinlami. Our focus is on the North Central today, but first, let's take this top story. The Lagos State Governor, Babajide Sanwulu, says more buildings will go down on Lagos Island as he decries the spate of infractions in the business district area. The governor ordered the indefinite closure of the Dosumo market and mandated relevant agencies in the state to go after those flouting safety regulations. The governor made this statement during his visit to the site of the fire incident, which affected about 14 buildings on Tuesday. Governor Sonwulu is worried that residents and traders have continually flouted safety regulations, mandating the state agencies to attend to the issues without delay. The market all around will be closed today, tomorrow, until when we're able to do a full assessment and to do a proper cleanup of this entire area. I want to say without any out of doubt that some other buildings are still going to go down. This is totally unacceptable. We will not allow a few people, a few people who will not comply with our rules, with our laws, to put the lives of others in danger. Fiscal planning, planning authorities, LAPCA, are going to be having a difficult time with me. And when they have a difficult time with me, you will know they will come on the street. This is fire that is happening too often, too many, and it is totally unacceptable. People put generators on top of roofs, on third floors of buildings, on fourth floors of buildings, and we've said that this is not acceptable. Totally unacceptable in residential houses. And we'll see the consequences of inaction. Displaced persons in over a hundred communities in parts of Plateau State are to be resettled in their ancestral homes before the commencement of the farming season. That's in fulfillment of the resettlement program by the tax force saddled with this responsibility. The group has given assurances of the speedy resettlement of the IDPs to their various communities with necessary intervention from the state government, especially in areas of security and reconstruction of damaged houses. The Task Force on Resettlement of Internally Displaced Persons has commenced on the spot assessment and interactive sessions with victims of attacks affected across 121 communities of Mangu, Riyom, Bokos, and Barkinladi, local government areas of Plateau State. Terms of reference of the task force is to identify communities displaced within the affected local government areas to relocate the internally displaced persons and obtain their statistics as well as ascertain if the displaced communities were occupied forcefully with a view to making them secure the returnees with necessary requirements that will help them in resettling and ensure that security measures are put in place in these communities. <laughs> Members of the task force embarked on the assessment tour in the affected communities. They had interactive sessions where some displaced persons have started returning, though with some anxiety. They are asking the government to speedily commence the resettlement agenda. We are very impressed with the government as far as we have seen them on ground that they want to return those that are displaced. After this incident, most of their crops were destroyed. And as a result of that, they don't have any economic power. Task Force Chairman led the team to Mangu for the assessment and preparations for the resettlement, where over 67 communities were affected. If you have occupied a place illegally, we will take, make sure the law takes its course so that the people who are entitled to a fair hearing get the justice. Another team, led by the Vice Chairman, retired Brigadier General John Sura, visited Bokos, where 53 communities were assessed. One of the things we are also assessing is not only 
looking at how the households and their return. We also want to, we're also looking at the security situation around them. Transition Committee Chairman of Bokus Local Government Area, Monde Kasa, expresses confidence that the displaced persons will soon be resettled as government is set to ensure safety of lives and property in the locality. We have the vigilante, we have uh, professional hunters, we have forest guards. All these people are, will come together so that we will deploy them to these communities and uh, they will now give protection to the communities. As the process for resettlement of internally displaced persons across the affected communities continue, government should endeavor to put in place necessary measures that will facilitate the resettlement, especially in areas of security and intervention in rebuilding destroyed homes and provision of farm implement to boost agriculture, which is the main occupation in the areas. Joining us to discuss the Plateau State Government's resettlement of IDPs in the Bocos area is Air Commodore Christopher Pam, the chairman of the Resettlement Task Force. Thank you so much for joining us on the program. Thank you for having me. Now, what, specific, what specific measures is the Plateau State Government taking to resettle displaced persons in Bocos area? Well, I think First, based on our current assessment, it is the threat to life. It is until most of these people are run So we want to see that security returns fully to the places, especially to those that have been displaced. So security is going to be paramount. Then we will look at trying to the community sitting together so that they can uh, I feel not any little differences that they have. I think that's basically what the government will want to put in place. Do you have any statistics or data regarding the number of people expected to be resettled in the Bocos area? And is there any criteria used to prioritize their resettlement? Yeah, okay. This is what we are doing. We have received data from the various communities and as I'm talking now I am in the field trying to get confirmation of this data so we cannot give out any specific data now until we are sure that what was provided is correct so we are still going on and I can tell you for sure that most of what was presented has been confirmed so we are still going around we still have a lot of place to go we are still trying to go, probably we'll complete it tomorrow, then we can come out specifically. What about the criteria? The criteria for... For the resettlement, are you looking at any... We are just... No, the, the, yes, uh, specific, the, the government wants people to go back to their farmlands. The headsmen that, headsmen that have been dislodged should also come back to their former land because their presence in other places is causing inconveniences and could also come because they have gone to occupy other lands and that is another source of conflict. So uh, specifically, we are actually only looking at ensuring that government, government provides security so that people can start farming this farming system as the rain comes, the conveniences come down. Okay, what kind of support Will the people be receiving from the Plateau State Government, especially to get their lives back on track? Please, can, can you come again? Sorry. What kind of support? I'm looking at the support the people should be expecting to get from the Plateau State Government. Okay, from what we have had so far, most of them have been out of famine for some time. So probably some of them may need an initial boost for a startup. Uh, that will include probably things like fertilizer, things like uh, farming implements for them to survive because a lot of them are in security IDP camps. So they will probably need some food for them, for them to go and start life when they are going to start a farming. And you mentioned security. What plans are in place to ensure a long-term safety and security for the resettled individuals? Yes, 
yeah. and a party, you cannot say one whole thing because if you want, you go to one community, you will find that their needs are quite different from each other. So it will be based on the needs. The thing escalated as a result of minor conflicts between children and it snowballed into uh, maybe tribal religious. But there are, there are others that came for very minor reasons. But the most important thing to take note of is the population explosion that is going on, that has gone. So facilities have become short. So one of the things that I have to do is to maximize the use of these facilities if we want to succeed. I think that is the core in the settling the, the problem. We cannot force the people to stay together if they do not agree. So we government will want to see the possibility of probably those remote causes of this uh, problem and get to the root of it. Chairman of the Settlement Tax Force, Air Commodore Christopher Pam, a pleasure sharing your thoughts with us on the program and we sincerely apologize to our viewers for the poor audio quality there. Thank you. Now let's go to Benue State where Governor Hyacinth Alia has challenged farming communities to organize themselves into vigilante groups working under the supervision of the state to confront persistent herdsmen attacks. The governor made the remark at the mass burial of 18 farmers, including 82-year-old twin brothers who were killed on March the 7th by suspected herdsmen. The remains of 18 farmers, including 82-year-old twin brothers, killed by suspected herdsmen on the 7th of March in Guaya East Council of Benue State, have been removed from mass burial under tight security. The final journey to Wandu Mbaikio community was rough as the truck conveying the remains got stuck. But with efforts from local youths, the truck safely arrived with mourners weeping. <laughs> One of the widows, whose husband, late warrant officer Julius Agbata, was killed, narrates their final moments. My husband told me that I should run so that I enter his house as I come and say, make a run. So as I did run, he tell me say to make a go. As I did go, we run inside bush. Oh, how many miles? I reach about three miles. With the, leg. the President General of Massev Development Association and the member of the Benin State Assembly laments the failure of governments to protect the citizens. Despite this madness, despite these horrific killings, I will still advise my people, the Massev Nation, to, to remain law abiding. They should never take the law in their own hands. Headers are invaded our land. Our problem is that anytime they attack, the government will come later to give the befitting burial. We should not be proud to bury our people. We should be proud to do what? Protect the people. The primary responsibility of government is protection of lives and property. The funeral mass was conducted in the local thief dialect. Worried about the frequent attacks, the governor, represented by the deputy, calls for formation of vigilante groups to confront the attackers. Vigilante group? or whether you call it joint civilian joint task force, profile them properly and hand them over to government to run them. That is the solution to this. Between 2017 and 2024, the area has experienced at least three attacks. The residents say they are worried that no security measures have been adopted to protect the vulnerable communities from Mbalom through Wandu, Mbaikiayo to Ipayongu, all in Gua East local government area of Benue State. Welcome back. The lingering crisis of land encroachment on Kwara State Polytechnic by surrounding villages seems to be heading to a peaceful resolution as the stakeholders' meeting has been held to resolve the 50-year-old tussle. At the end of the interactive session, it was agreed that those claiming ownership of lands by the villagers should produce legal documents while the development of new structures be stopped. 
The Kwara State Polytechnic was established in 1972 by the Kwara State government to provide technical and science-oriented courses to indigent students and those seeking admission from outside the state. Over 5,000 hectares of land was acquired to build the school and settlement made to the traditional owners. But the families of those settled decades ago are adamant that they still have rights, taking over nearly 2,000 hectares. The knowledgeable people here are enjoying the benefits of the land. The real owners of the land have gained nothing. If I'm lying, my father is here. He didn't receive any compensation. Let's see the names of those compensated listed on a big screen, so it can be verified that they were compensated. We believe that if the polytechnic is fenced, it will take care of this next challenge, which is a uh, challenge of land encroachment. As part of measures to put a permanent stop to the encroachment, the management of the school, in collaboration with the alumni body, organized a stakeholders meeting with the villagers, government officials, and student body, among others. We are of the view that they are ready to use all means, including threats, terrorism, sponsored court cases, and blackmailing to snatch the land they do not own. The total area left for Kuala State Technical for Development is actually about 3,500 hectares. They were, however, pacified and made to see reason for amicable resolution as they joined the committee to issue a communique later. As part of the resolution, any villager laying claim to any portion of the land is mandated to tender documents while future developments have been stopped until a final resolution is reached. Kwana State Geographic Information Service should be contacted in their office by every private de developer to find their land status. The Kwara State government on several occasions had explained that the land had been acquired and compensation given to the original owners. When Kwara Poli was being established, as it then was, I think it was not Kwara Poli at the beginning, when it was established, the government, yes, go ahead, the government actually acquired some land for the Poli to sit on. I am very sure that this land is properly marked, which means the boundary of Kwara Poli is known to the law of Kwara State. This meeting is expected to serve as the beginning of more interaction to end the land crisis. The Niger State Governor, Mr. Omar Ubago, has performed the groundbreaking of 118 kilometers of road comprising three road projects in Kotangora as part of plans to open up roads that will facilitate efficient movement of agricultural produce. Before in the ceremony, the governor disclosed that so far his government has embarked on the construction of a thousand kilometers of road projects across the state, out of which 400 kilometers are federal roads. Ongoing road projects in Niger State include the reconstruction of a 19 kilometer Contangora Rijao Road, the construction of the 19.4 kilometer Contangora Western Bypass Ring Road and the 8.7 km Tangara Eastern Bypass Ring Road. They are being done simultaneously as part of the state government's plan to ensure farmers do not incur losses while transporting agricultural produce from the farm to the market. As a state and with the uh, collaboration of the Prime Minister of Works and also the Presidency, Mr. President has already given us a go ahead to go ahead with these jobs. Then we have gotten investment and partnership and also funding from our partners in the banking industry and the financial sector. And we have attracted almost a, uh, about five billion US dollars for all these jobs. And uh, we are sure that uh, we will change the face of Niger State, both in agriculture, both in aviation. Uh, this is uh, what we are doing. And this is the new Niger. This is the spirit of the new Niger. <laughs> Aside from helping the farmers, the state government also hopes to reduce rural urban migration while giving assurances of quality and timely delivery. To be constructed as part of this flyover 
is the expansion of the ongoing contemporary bypass and contemporary railroad, which have lengths of 8.7 kilometers and 9.5 kilometers with respect to these projects are expected to enhance the free flow of regular traffic in Contagora and its environs and reduce the, the rate of accidents, travel time, and, and variable operational costs. Invited guests, the execution of these various road projects in the zone is expected to improve the socioeconomic well being of the people, reduce the rural urban migration, and enhance agricultural activities as agricultural goods and products can be easily transported to markets within the road networks with put in place in good condition. The Emir of Kuntangra, Brau Mzau, expresses gratitude to the governor, saying that the road projects will facilitate growth and development within the local government under Kuntangra Emirate. On behalf of the good government of Kuntangra Emirate, my gratitude goes to His Excellency, the Executive Governor of Niger State. Upon completion of the, uh, the projects, will permanently transform the lives of the communities and contemporary Emirates in general. It will uh, alleviate the hardship faced by the com com uh, commuters along the Bangi and regional edges, facilitate business operation, and bring significant benefits to the lives of the farmers, traders, school children, and travelers. <laughs> The roads are part of promises made by the governor during the period of his campaign as he assures the people of going above and beyond on all his promises. The Benway State Government has upscaled its operations both on financial regulations and public service rule for the 23 local government areas following the financial autonomy granted the third year of government by the governor, Hyacinth St. Alia in the hope that the National Assembly will finally pass the bill into law. The chairman of the Benue State Local Government Service Commission, Mr. James Iveva, says going forward, the local government administration must be done in full compliance with the service rules for spending, procurement and storage. He notes that the reforms also include the newly established information communication technology in all operations, adoption of solar-powered system and effective bookkeeping. Local government administration in Benway State today enjoys financial autonomy following the approval granted the third tier of government to Governor Hyacinth Alia at an induction ceremony in Makredi last month. I am happy to say that my administration has given its full blessings to the autonomy of our local governments. <laughs> Wants due to the local government to be promptly. We are therefore committed to the growth and development of the system and have outlined the adequate plans to open up the rural areas to enable rural economies to thrive. The pronouncement has led to the scaling up of activities for administrators of the third tier of government by the Benue State Local Government Service Commission. The commission procured service rule books and financial regulations and spending limits, service regulations and storekeeping, a major source of pilfering in the system. We have on the table here public service rules, store regulations, financial instructions, establishment circulars, guide to administrative procedures, approved scheme of service for local government employees in Nigeria. I believe by the time we distribute these books to the concerned staff in various departments, it will definitely go a long way to improving their performances. The Director of Administration and Finance commends the approach and enlists reforms implemented by the Board with positive effects since December 2023. Sir, what you have done today is very much important to us. In the past, local government system has been operating in error. But with, with these service books, I believe we will continue to progress according to what the local government system is supposed to be and according to what the government of the day is yearning for.
The team, led by the board chairman, inspects the newly established Information and Communications Technology Unit for Digital Operations and Solar Powered Systems as management staff express confidence in key deliverables. We were happy with what we saw here when we invited them here to collect their letters. The way they spoke, some of them were amazed that they were not expecting anything like that because in the past, they did not experience anything like this. And I want to appreciate that because when we were working, there was no interruption. We refused even within ourselves that there should be no interference. The idea is to deliver a local government system that runs on transparency, anchored on service rules that allow junior staff to decline any directive contrary to the service rule to curb maladministration. That's the program today. Thank you so much for watching. I'm Melinda Akinwami.